you know, it just seems like there's a list after list that comes out. Uh, uh, I think it was Atlantic Monthly. Uh, just today, another list of the places where people want to live. Uh, I think three of the top five gray were in Texas and uh, Dallas, Houston, and Austin. And it's pretty fascinating uh, what we've created here in the state. And um, again, it's not just us bragging about our children and that they're smart and that they're, that they're good looking. Uh, it's other people saying that uh, Texas is a, uh, quite a place to, to, to live and to raise a family and, and to work. So um, no other organization, I think, represents that reflects that bill as the as much as the Texas Association of Business. So uh, you have played a very important role in enhancing and I might add sustaining our state's very successful business climate and um, that's our goal, that's our job to keep it on track, uh, to keep Texas on that track and as we go about that uh, effort um, Please don't forget some very sage advice. Don't read ever, or don't believe everything you read in the paper, uh, because the chattering classes out there are going to do their best to paint a picture of impending doom, budgetary disaster. And I'm not trying to minimize the very real challenges that we face, um, and the members of the legislature that are here. Uh, assure you of, of the, the challenges that are out there. But I do want to emphasize one clear advantage that uh, we have in this process, uh, and that is clear direction from their boss. Uh, I think all of you realize that uh, your company does better when there is a clear direction uh, from your boss. And the boss that I'm talking about is the people of the state of Texas. That's our boss. And let me tell you, if you weren't paying attention to the message that they sent on the second day of November, I would suggest you clean those eyeglasses off a little bit, uh, clear out the wax in your ears, because it was loud and it was clear. They told us that they want to see the budget balanced in the state of Texas, they want to make government leaner, and they want to make it more efficient. In short, they told us they want more of what we've done here in Texas over the past decade. Uh, you know, back in Oh, three, we faced another one of those challenging periods uh, and the sky is falling crowd was out in, in mass. Uh, we heard the, the calls for a state income tax. There's no way that you can cut that type of amount of money out of state government without doing devastating damage to this state, its people, its reputation. We came out of 2003 in good shape because we resisted that plea to raise taxes and re remain true to that time-tested fiscal disciplines. It yielded an environment in the state where employers like you can thrive. As a result, Texas has generated more jobs than any other state in the nation over the past 10 years. We lead the nation in exports for eight years running, home to more Fortune 1000 companies than any other state. As you've led your own companies, you've seen that ripple effect of the global and national recession up real close and personal. You know that times have been tough, but our sound policies has Texas rebounding quicker than any other state. You might have heard What's happening in places like Illinois, where their state leaders decided that they needed to increase the income tax rate. I think it was by 66% they increased it. And that was to make a little short term, less painful process for them. A little less painful for government. And if you're a competitor, which I suggest every one of you are, just like me. I hope you're fired up about businesses that might trade the land of Lincoln for the land of opportunity and move on down to the great state of Texas. 
because the fact is here they'll find freedom from high taxes, more predictable regulatory climate, fair laws, and a accountable education system. They'll also discover companies like yours ready to compete, which makes everyone better. I want employers in Illinois and elsewhere in this country to uh, know that we remain committed to the principles that have energized our economy. During this session, we need to keep our taxes low so that Texas families can keep more of their hard-earned money. Employers like you can channel more resources into hiring more people, to buying new equipment. We need to maintain our predictable regulatory structure and fend off intrusive federal agencies like the EPA as they threaten Texas jobs and, I might add, our successful air quality programs. We need to continue to fight against lawsuit abuse because employers aren't doing anybody any good when they're tied up in the courthouse. I hope the 82nd legislature will consider improving our important tort protections during this session with even greater accountability, transparency, and efficiency. You know, whether they're doctors or employers or private citizens, victims of frivolous lawsuits shouldn't have to bear the financial burden of defending themselves. Instead, that responsibility should fall to the, the individual who brought that suit in the first place. Texas is one of the few states in the nation who do not currently have an early dismissal option for obviously frivolous lawsuits. But we should. If we give judges that option, we should balance that new power by limiting new causes of actions to those created by you members of the legislature. Um, make it very transparent, very deliberative. We need to make our system more accessible to the little guy, if you will, by setting up expedited trials and, and limited discovery for lawsuits that claim between $10,000 and $100,000. These reforms would further improve the legal climate in our state, impart even more energy to our economy, and ratchet up the fairness of our system. Now, Bill, you know something that we share in, in common, just beyond the love of our state, uh, and that's our belief in the importance of education. Uh, as, as I saw from your record as a member of the legislature when we served together back in the, in the 80s. Uh, and especially when it comes to uh, dealing with the workforce. As our economy continues to reflect advances in technology, our educational approaches must do the same. Uh, with increasing our emphasis on science and technology, engineering, math, Texans need to compete for the jobs of the future. Those are the basic building blocks of an economy that has drawn those new employers to the state. I, I mentioned in the, the first of my remarks about people wanting to live here, and it's those, those industries and businesses that are highly dependent upon science and technology and engineering and math that are drawing those educated individuals to the state of Texas. You know, when times get tight, voices call for higher taxes. I mean, it's as sure as, you know, God made strawberries. I mean, it's this, you just bet on it. Times get tight, budgets get tight, and we're going to hear those loud voices to raise taxes. That is exactly the wrong tact to take. It burdens Texas families, it burdens Texas employers. Do you really need to tell struggling families that we haven't given enough to government already? I don't think so. Do you really, do you really, do you really want to derail the job-friendly climate that drives our economy? 
I don't think so. Nothing kills creativity. Nothing stifles innovation. Nothing halts progress more quickly than raising taxes as the global and national economy struggle to recover, that approach looks even more misguided. Instead, we need to balance the budget with existing revenue, evaluating every state program to determine wants from needs, then resisting the call to raise taxes. And by following those guidelines, no matter the situation, we can get the job done. Of course, you know, budgeting's only part of the, the job at hand. Texans are eager to see action on a host of issues, many of which I've designated on the, uh, the emergency call, uh, so the legislature can uh, to get to work. I never understood that, Dan. You know, when, when we first got here in, in 1985, I never understood, it's kind of, what do you mean we, we can't pass any legislation in the first 40 days that we're here? What's that all about? You know, that's like telling the University of Texas, he can't score any points in the first five minutes of the game. Now, that's a good idea if they're going to play A&M. I might want to, <laughs> I want to reconsider. <laughs> Strengthening our eminent domain laws. That's one of the uh, issues that I put on the call. I think it's important to, uh, to protect those cherished rights of, of our private property owners. Uh, we need to abolish the sanctuary city rules so that our professional law enforcement personnel have the discretion to do their jobs, keep our families and our neighborhoods safe. Um, the Senate's already begun action on passing legislation requiring a person to present proof of identity before casting a vote, uh, one of the most precious rights that we have. And the idea that we shouldn't guard against people fraudulently um, uh, using any means to, uh, to, to vote when, when it's not their privilege uh, it's not their right. I'm also empowered um, our legislature to quickly join the growing chorus of Americans calling for a balanced budget amendment to the United States Constitution. Um, I, I wish they wouldn't do anything up there um, until they got that passed. I don't think there would be a more powerful message to men and women all across this country like you that Washington was at long last going to live within its means and to not spend more money than it was bringing in. It makes all the sense in the world to me, and I think we all can work together to demand that Washington have the same physical discipline that so many of the states have to live under, and certainly Texas is a great example of how to make it work. So, um, and, and actually, this session of the legislature is more than just making it through this budgeting cycle and, and you know going home and, and living under the laws that you pass. Uh, Bill, it, it's, it's, uh, it's more than that. Uh, you know, we're still dealing with the whims of a group of people thousands of miles away in the nation's capital that impact us every day, uh, that have a very negative impact uh, on the state of Texas. Uh, I was talking to a group of, 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 of both uh, U.S. senators and governors yesterday about the massive cost to our states and to this country with the health care bill that has been passed up there. And, and for instance, just in, in this issue of, of being able to, it's called maintenance of effort, maintaining maintenance of effort. What that means to me is, is uh, that shorthand for we're going to run everything from Washington. You can't have any flexibility to decide how to, uh, to, to run your states. Uh, and, and we've got to keep pushing back against this federal encroachment into the states. Uh, the, this, you know, this federal encroachment into almost every area of our lives, whether it's dealing with health care delivery or whether it's education of our children or whether it's the air that we breathe. They want to come into the state of Texas. For that matter, they want to come into every state and run our states. Time and time again, Texas has demonstrated the ability to solve these types of of challenges through innovation, through dedication to solid conservative principles. And with your continued input, those very principles will continue to guide us through not only the end of this session, but well into the years to come and serve this state well. With your informed and enthusiastic support, 
your continued focus on keeping your businesses strong, I'm very encouraged about not only the state of our state, but the prospects for future success in this state and in turn in this country. God bless you and thank you all for letting me come and visit with you today.